All right, guys. Here's another art journal page. This is from a local, uh, just circular, I guess, at the grocery store. I saw it as I was leaving, and I said, "Oh my gosh, that is such a pretty butterfly." Then I got it home and realized, "Oh my gosh, the wings have faces." So then I really knew I had to have them. So I cut it out, and this is the back page of the. Uh, Young at Heart art journal page, and because of all the stitching, the paper had gotten very um, flimsy because essentially the sewing machine put holes in it and had pierced it. So to keep it together, I used some uh, deli paper and some Mod Podge to glue it to keep the page together and keep it cohesive. So I'm using some golden gesso right now and just used a baby wipe to wipe some of it up. This is some Artist Loft liquid watercolor in yellow, and I left a lot of drying footage in this video uh, because a, a lot of the techniques I did were during the drying process. As you can see, I was shaking the page to get some of the color to run in different areas. Uh, at times, I'll blot color up while I'm drying. So the, the drying footage in this page was completely intentional. Uh, this is Weathered Wood Distress Ink, and it's a bluish gray. As you can see, that top left-hand corner, it soaked right into the raw paper, which was okay. Um, this page ends up going really grungy, which I'm I'm happy for. I kind, I kind of like the background more than I like the focal image, but that's okay. So as you can see, with, with it wet, I'm drying it, and then shaking it, and then spraying it, and then dabbing it, so there's a lot going on. So... Um, while I'm doing that, and I think I go in with bright persimmon distress ink as well. These are the reinkers, by the way. Um, talking about gesso, I have a I've tried a couple different brands of gesso. Here's that bright persimmon. It's an orange. Uh, I've tried a couple different brands of gesso. The Artist Loft, which is from Michaels, uh, no good. Stay away from. It stinks to high heaven, like like mold, and. Um, other than that, I had no problem with it, but it, it really, it, it reeks. Um, so, so avoid it. Um, and I, lately I've been using Liquitex. It's easier to find. Michaels carries it, and um, it's in a squeezy bottle, so it's convenient. But recently I got some Golden. The Liquitex is very uh, gritty. When it dries, it feels a lot more like sandpaper. The golden is a lot smoother. Um, so it's still got that chalky kind of finish, but it's um, it's just smoother. So there, there are some times I think I would use one versus the other, so I like them both. Uh, here's the right persimmon distress ink. I'm just going around and adding some more color on there. And then I think here I added some acrylic, some fluid acrylic, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. This is fluid acrylic. Uh, one of my uh, family members uh, uses one of those vaporizer things, and I have him save all of the little dropper bottles that they use to refill because they make great dropper bottles. They're like the Tim Holtz Distress Ink Rinker bottles, and uh, they screw tight, and you can put the uh, acrylic ink in there, and it won't dry. It's great. They're fantastic. So if you or anyone you know vapes, you know, uses vaporizers, have them save those little containers for you. Plus, they smell really good. So, this is Tim Holtz Distress Ink in Walnut Stain, and I'm just going around the edge just to darken it up a little bit more, add a little bit more grunge. And this is where I decided, oh, to hell with it. I'm just going to make this page super grungy. So, I ran the whole ink pad over everything, and as you can see, it's pulling through where the uh, the stitched lines were and the edges of the um, the deli paper, and there you go. So, this is the magazine image, and I used Versamark ink and inked it up really, really well until it was nice and juicy, and then covered it in UT, which is ultra-thick embossing enamel, U-T-E-E. -E. For, for those of you out there who don't have it. And as you can see, it it's essentially a powder form of plastic. And once... Uh, so the, the Versamark is sticky, it and it's clear. Once the uh, powder sticks to the... Whatever it is that you're, you're sticking it to with the Versamark, 
and heat it, it, uh, it turns it translucent, and uh, it essentially melts the plastic. So, uh, and it gives you this really, really cool enamel finish. And there you can see it a little bit better. Now, uh, because this magazine image was on that like newsprint paper, it's super fine paper, very delicate. It tended to warp the the paper, the heat did, plus the embossing powder. Um, and the UT has since cracked in a couple areas. And uh, because I've forced it down uh, during this step, I added a bunch of uh, score tape to keep it down and in place. And I'm also going to go in with a hot glue gun and uh, get the edges. So, But I wanted to use score tape to, to make sure it really, really stuck down. Um, so at any rate, the the embossing powder, or the embossing enamel, once once it's dried, has cracked. They make an additive you can add to it called Flex, um, but I've yet to be able to find it anywhere, and I'm way too impatient to order anything from online retailers. I've only made one one uh, purchase from Blitzy, and um, I'm just so impatient. I, I want it now. So, uh, but you can always reheat it, that area, which I have done. I've reheated it, and uh, the plastic melts back together. So, there you go, which I think I've done in, like, a couple videos before, so. Um, just using some hot glue just to go down around the edges so that way uh, this image really stays down. I was contemplating doing some shading around it, but I thought that the the image stood out so much on its own, even though the colors are there. I was like, I'm not even going to bother. And then I was also going to trim the edges off, and I'm like, no, let them hang off the edge. So what? So I did. Let them hang off the edge. Because I'm on the edge of glory. I love that stupid song. Did you know I love that song? I bet you knew I loved that song. So this is my Stabilo pen. Uh, it's the brush tip pen. And I just did some really quick journaling. Uh, I didn't feel like this needed a big fancy title. I didn't feel like I needed to spend a whole lot of time. Uh, the technique and the color on the background came out exactly as I wanted it. The butterfly image kind of speaks for itself because it's about a person and metamorphosis and change and how we can always be improving ourselves and um never never think that you're you know you're done being who you are you can you can constantly change of course there are parts of you that are harder to change than others and but that's okay keep striving to be to be the better you so that's kind of the whole theme of this page and this is some archival ink right around the edges and that pretty much finishes it. I think this page has been made for a couple weeks now. I made it in the beginning to middle of August. So I uh, hope you like the page. I thought it came out pretty cool. The background texture is awesome. I probably could have lived without the focal image of the page, which I love. But I just like the background that much. So hope you like this page. Feel free to subscribe, like, uh, check out some more of my videos. Find me on Facebook, Imperfect Impulses with Aaron. I will talk to you all soon. Bye.